testing, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Can you hear me now? What's the temperature outside? It's 9.30, you're up late. It's about 70 outside, it's only 64 inside. <laughs> it's been chilly, but I think the audio is gonna work, so let's do this. So I had to download those and test it, and it came out, so hopefully the audio is working still. Rex, how come you don't bark at that crow right there? And how come you don't jump up against this slider the same way you do in uh, Weymouth? Ready, ready, Rex, ready, go. <laughs> Oh, you're getting sideways on the tricks. Oh, boy. It's it's dangerous walking with bare feet now, not because of bees, but because of acorns. The acorns are everywhere. The squirrels are going to town. You got the acorns. You know what that means? Winter's on the way. <laughs> when the acorns start falling, the seasons are changing. And today is the last day of meteorological summertime. That's right. Uh, autumnal, uh, official Meteorological autumn begins tonight, not with the autumnal equinox. That's where I was going with that. And you can hear the, the leaves rustling. We have warm air advection. Now, initially with the wind from the southeast this morning, there are some kind of low clouds mixing with the high clouds. And we are done with the, uh, the sunny weather that was, what, just one day in a row? Yesterday was quite sunny, quite beautiful. And now we have a lot of clouds, but the, the whole forecast for today has changed remarkably in the last five days. A cold front was supposed to be moving offshore this morning. Instead, the front is still to our west. As a matter of fact, we have dual fronts to our west. Let's start with a satellite image. You get the broken clouds over most of New England, and you see the thicker clouds with convection. <laughs> that is those, uh, the cumulonimbus clouds. Those are over New York and into Canada, and they'll be moving into northern New England as the day progresses. So we're gonna be breezy with temperatures in the 70s. Here's the Boston Meteogram for uh, the next five days. You said, see the temperature pushing 80 today. The clouds are in and out of the sky. And we're going to stay dry today in southern and eastern New England. Tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow, the showers are going to come in here. It's going to be sticky. The dew point's going up to 70 degrees tomorrow. Uh, but it's still not a washout, but there are going to be showers around. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, let's look at the radar. Uh, the national radar. I want to show the real big picture radar because there's a lot going on beyond what's just going to happen here in New England. You have that rain with some thunder off to the west. Uh, those are thunderstorms near Buffalo, New York this morning. And then another batch north of Minnesota. That's going to be the front that really pushes the cool air in here. That's coming in tomorrow night for the most part here in southern New England. And then you look at the Gulf of Mexico and Florida. And the, the rain there on the coast of Texas is now being identified as the National Hurricane Center says that we're gonna have to monitor that. So now there's one, two, three yellow X's from Texas to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And while uh, the one way out there to the right is not expected to really develop, the one in the middle is gonna go into the Caribbean and that one may play a role in the forecast near the Gulf of Mexico out around day 10. But the one in Texas, the one on the Texas coast may be part of the system that we talked about yesterday, bringing us a, a potential hybrid nor'easter here next weekend. Uh, so there's a long way to go between here and there. And why don't we start here? Temperatures this morning are in the 60s to near 70 degrees. The wind is out of the southeast. The dew point is climbing into the 60s. And let's go to the the HRRR and monitor the showers and thunderstorms, which the Severe Storm Prediction Center says could be severe in New York, but uh, probably not New England. Here they come into Vermont, not until about four or five o'clock. Uh, they look pretty intense, the squall line there, but notice the squall line is kind of falling apart as it moves across southern Vermont into New Hampshire. And then you just with a leftover shower in the middle of the night possible in southern New England. And then tomorrow, uh, you have the black lines. Those are isobars and the red lines. Still the 570 thickness uh, is over New England, so it's still on the warm side of the front. And then here comes another batch of showers with embedded thunderstorms and isolated severe weather is possible tomorrow. And so it's hit or miss most of the time. It's not raining, but note they do uh, make their way to Cape Cod. And then tomorrow night, some of those showers and thunderstorms may linger around Cape Cod as the leading edge of the colder air comes in. So a front is a boundary between two different kinds of air. We had the cool air for the last few days. Now we're getting to the warmer air only briefly. That's called warm air advection, precipitation. And then the cold fronts will be colder air coming back in. And we may have record challenging low temperatures around the northeast here by Tuesday morning as high pressure builds in. T-Rex, what are you looking at over here? We're on intermission. Let me uh, get you out of this uh, little uh, island here that you're stuck in. 
Uh, Brother Kevin is over there, perhaps making breakfast, and Rex can smell food from two houses away. <laughs> All right, intermission's over. Let's go to the Euro model now and see how everything moves over the next 10 days. Uh, there's that one front coming out of Canada into New England today and kind of falling apart tonight. And then we have new cyclogenesis and frontogenesis uh, happening in southeastern Canada with that front and another round of showers and storms tomorrow. Again, not a washout. And wait, time out. I should show you the QPF. I forgot to show you uh, the how much rain we might get. This is the HRRR rainfall amounts. Uh, QPF is called quantitative precipitation forecast. There are the batches coming in today and then again tomorrow. And note the Boston area, there's really almost nothing there. I mean, this is not verbatim. You can shift these lines by 50 or 100 miles. And here on Cape Cod, there's a strip of light rain coming right down Route 6 <laughs> uh, uh, late tomorrow into Monday. And I think there will be some people happy if we get a little bit of rain, but not a lot of rain because last week when we planted the seed, we got a lot of rain in a short time and the seed has been replanted. And <laughs> we could use a light rain, please, here tomorrow night and Monday. Of course, we don't want it on a Sunday, Monday, but well, you gotta take it. A lot of us are on vacation next week, us being uh, <laughs> neighbors over here. All right, let's go back into motion. Uh, so it does not look like flooding rain, but there'll be some areas that get an inch of rain, uh, mostly across New York and Vermont. Here's the Euro going back into motion. High pressure coming in here. Initially, fairly windy weather coming in, uh, especially near the ocean and in the hills on Monday afternoon. And then uh, Monday night, still enough isobars that we're not going to have widespread radiational cooling. So lows are going to be in the 40s and 50s, and it'll still be breezy. Now, if the atmosphere decouples, and that is you go clear and calm, then you're looking at some 30s. And I think that's more possible on on Tuesday night into Wednesday, we may have some frost advisories for parts of Maine. That counts as New England, right? On Wednesday, that high pressure goes right over us. And then uh, here's where it gets very interesting. Uh, you get to uh, get watch systems coming at us from the west and the north and systems coming at us from the south. And now we will stop it again on Saturday morning, just as we did yesterday, where two days ago it had us just in high pressure and nice weather on the warm side of the front. Uh, now you've uh, got two days in a row where it shows a storm, not as strong as it was yesterday, but a storm off of New Jersey at about, what, a thousand, I can't remember, seven millibars. And that looks like a formidable hybrid storm. That is something coming, that's part of that system coming out of the Gulf of Mexico and also a cold front coming at us from Canada. And that's how it works. You know, these tropical events come in our direction and they, they merge with fronts coming out of Canada. And note that front coming out of Canada, uh, the 540 line is up there. That's the cold enough for snow line. And a lot of times as you get deeper into the... Uh, September and October, you will get these tropical systems that do have snow in the higher elevations. That does not look like the case uh, in this in this one, though. Uh, there's a strong high coming through the Midwest. Now let's put this back into motion and we move it to the south and we see uh, that system that's way out in the Atlantic Ocean will have gone through the Caribbean and we have a potential hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. That would be Monday, September 9th. That's the 10-day forecast. So plenty to watch over the next, well, always. <laughs> I should say there's always plenty to watch. And last night, oh yeah, I'm looking at that webcam. My friend Michael McCormick put up the webcams at New England Outdoor Club in Millinocket, Maine, looking toward Mount Katahdin just after midnight last night. There was a coronal mass ejection solar storm last week, and that ionized the molecules at the top of the atmosphere, northern lights, aurora. If we were at the North Pole, we would call them borealis. But when you're not at the North Pole, it's just called aurora or northern lights. And I actually went outside and walked down the end of the driveway and I looked up through these trees and I saw Jupiter or Mars and I took a picture. And if you look very closely, you can almost make out a little pink on the sky here. Uh, but uh, the weather not conducive to finding northern lights in New England tonight or tomorrow night. And, uh, just follow the people on on Twitter for space weather, and uh, there's plenty of people that forecast these uh, uh, geomagnetic storms. What else? Oh yeah, I wanted to make a little editorial, very sad news uh, from the roads that we travel quite frequently around here. Uh, over there, there's a road called uh, West Great Western Road that goes by Route 6. Uh, it goes underneath Route 6 over there by White's Path, and there was a tragedy. Uh, there was a motor vehicle accident, and also well, yesterday up in Plymouth, there was also uh, a tragedy on the roads. So we've lost two people already to motor vehicle tragedy. And I, I reiterate that I am more frightened 
uh, traveling on our roads, especially since the pandemic, than I am going surfing, as I will be, on the, uh, at the national seashore uh, with these huge majestic animals, which are mostly smart enough not to pursue surfers. And I, I, I'm not kidding that I feel safer in the water off of Wellfleet than I do sometimes on the roads when I see people coming at me in my rear view mirror going 100, 120 miles per hour. So that's a little TK editorial. All right, now to the out the door. Yesterday, it was a pretty nice day and it was a, a not in a hurry Friday for me. We just, I watched uh, some loam get delivered down here, did some help with Dolores in the garden. And I was reminiscing about how this yard started thanks to uh, the company formed by Baldy Shea and uh, old school Cape Cod, so a little Cape Cod history. And uh, uh, we keep it going. Esh and Jay delivering the mulch yesterday, and we'll be spreading that today. And we went blue crabbing uh, with the same uh, people that I went blue crabbing with 50 years ago. And <laughs> I don't know where they all went. Not too many blue crabs, but it's going to be a, a hard out on the uh, transition from the crabbing uh, to the nice, beautiful time lapse, also from Michael McCormick, IP time lapse of the sky in Weymouth yesterday. All right. Talk to you tomorrow. Oh, we're Steve and Mitt. We'll get them in tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Thanks for asking. They don't come on the road with us. See ya. Interesting weather right this second. Uh, just past one, about 72. Still in the shade, I think. We get some uh, low-level cumulus developing. Getting some bark mulch delivered across the way. Washed away last week. So it's getting more humid. So I think we've got uh, almost the fog cloud starting to form. So what happens when you live near the ocean, the humidity starts to come back up. More details to come. And from the Wayback Machine, I remember when we first had this house, I was just born and there were piles of just Cape Cod dirt, not even loam. Uh, one right here and another one right there that Baldy Shea came with his bulldozer and spread around. And my dad actually started this lawn from dirt, <laughs> not even loam. Anyhow, fast forward 55 plus years and S and J Exco still exists, so I don't think there's any more Shays. Baldy, we lost Baldy some time ago, and then my son Bobby uh, went way too early, and uh, John and Chris, I think, have divested. But the uh, SNJ continues with some mulch for the neighbors. Sundancers or Baxters? <laughs> oh, okay. Probably Sundancers. Yeah, probably Sundancers. So, from the small world department, Baldy Shea is the one that delivered the dirt and made those piles there 55 <laughs> years ago. About I don't it, know yeah. if you know, but Baldy and my father were friends. That is so cool. Did Baldy have another name besides Baldy? I don't know. I he think does. he did, but I don't know what the heck it was. And what's your name? Remind me your name. Manny Jason. Manny, good to see you again. Good to see you again. I, uh, I helped with the mulch a little bit, but then the rain came like two hours <laughs> later. How did that happen? Oh, the other day? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty nasty. Uh, I wasn't even here when it happened. I just saw Tim go to the bar and I said, it's really going to be bad. You shouldn't go. Oh, uh, it's the good stuff. It's still warm. Oh, yeah. It's still cooking. It's all warm here. Those piles you guys got over there are <laughs> massive. They're so cool. I love watching that. Don't go by today because the crab, the uh, clam shells we got are more than fresh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> more than fresh. I'm glad the wind's not blowing this way. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually good. Very lucky. They haven't invented smell o vision yet. <laughs> What's the name of this flower? Sedum. Sedum. And the bees like the sedum. Mm. Bees eat them, sedum. Oh. Oh, Those clouds completely evaporated. The sky is totally blue again. Haven't been down the beach in a while. Man, there must have been a waterfall coming out of there. Look at that erosion. Now you lose sand on the back and you gain it on the beach. We got a fresh delivery of a huge pile of sand here. Thank you, Mother Nature. That's what happens when you don't put up a seawall, you get more sand. Of course, you lose some banking. It's nice. Question is, are there any blue crabs in the water? No. No? There's a voice in the shadow out there that says, there are not, they're, they're there somewhere. It's August. It has to be crabs. This is cool. Gorgeous. The wind's now from the south for the most part. Tim, you point that way and say the wind's from the south. Well, that's east. South is over there. Okay, the wind is from the east. <laughs> that's more like it.
zero luck on the crabs, but I got a bunch of minnows nibbling at my ankles, which is kind of a curious feeling. What, what are they doing? <laughs> I'm being consumed by minnows. Thank goodness they're tiny. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be pretty scary. Hey, a bunch of ankle biters. I think it's a problem when the fish you catch is smaller than the bait you're using. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a boy crab. You can tell by that pointy thing right there. Not sure what the pointy thing is called. He's still eating. Yeah, we use chicken. Bye. Jump, jump, jump. See ya. Catch you again in a minute. <laughs> Carnival ride. Well, well, well. Two hours later. How do you do? Yeah. Are you going to take that home and eat one little? Yep, I am. I'm not putting it back after all this work. Are you kidding me? Can you put a little water in there if you don't mind? Can you just grab it with your hand? No, I don't think I'll do that, but. Wow, you're a pro. Oh, he's not bad sized, him. Look at, look at the back side of him. Decent size. You ain't gonna let go of that rail. Bro. <laughs> Hi. Finally. Jeez. I wonder why they call it a blue crab. Kidding. Those pinchers. I think that that's a state police helicopter and they're trying to check for blue crab fishing licenses. There's no question. They got these really high-tech cameras. They're right over Fallen's Pond. We're on the news. I'm going to Mayflower Beach, just like everyone else. <laughs>